Okay, this is Clara Drummond and last night Clara won the BP Portrait Award 2016 for her portrait of her very good friend Kirsty Buchanan uh, which is called Girl in a Liberty Dress and what I'm going to do is talk to Clara a little bit about how she got into portraiture and then her approach to this particular painting. So, Clara, you've been in the BP five times now, yeah. but um, are you? would you consider yourself a portrait painter first and foremost, or a painter? I'd like to think of myself as a painter first and foremost, um, and portraiture is one of my great passions. Yeah. And <clears throat> how did you actually start out as a, as a painter and as a portrait? Because you did modern languages at Cambridge. Yeah. So I, I wanted to go to art school ever since I was five years old. I introduced myself as Clara. I'm an artist. I always wanted to go to art school, but when it came to leaving school and looking at art schools at that time, it was all video and installation. And I was told by all the art schools that I visited that not to worry, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing any drawing or painting while I was there. And I knew that that wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I decided to do it on my own and go to university and carry on painting on my own. And while I was at university, friends sat for me and I spent a year abroad and again, I got people to sit for me. And it was just sort of gradually, I, I sort of found my own way. And then when I graduated from university, I moved to London and became an assistant to a portrait painter called Jonathan Yeo. And it was sort of four years of work. So you learned about what being a professional portrait artist is like at the front line. Yeah, like Johnny taught me how to survive and thrive as an artist living in London. And, which is a, a very unusual thing to be actually sort of living and alone on your painting alone and surviving on your painting alone. And he really taught me a lot about kind of having a rapport with your sitter and, and, having, and bringing your painting to life by sort of bringing out the best in someone, because um, all of Johnny's paintings are very... And that's interesting animated. because the judges' comments are very much about, um, they're noted by all the judges for a subtle, enigmatic nature. They're talking about the inner life of the subject, not just the how much is it like what she looks like. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I, I think that portraiture is so complex, it's such an ancient and, and extraordinary and mysterious thing painting another human being so we'll remember them and, and uh, I, I, Johnny told me that you don't want to make a painting of someone who looks like they're bored or they're about to nod off or that you know you have to it has to be more alive than that and so for me I, I guess I look at paint, portrait paintings all the time I look at Bellini and Pisanello I look at Freud, Freud Lucien Freud's paintings yeah. his early paintings I, I love Gwen John and, and, and his drawings and his drawings which Amazing. I think are extraordinary and Gwen John is a very important, uh -huh. important painter to me because she painted the same sitter again and again and, and developed her, her mark and developed her technique by returning again and again to the same subject and that's what you're doing with your friends when they sit for you yeah I feel that if you have the same sitter and you have a strong sort of friendship and trust and respect then you can start to explore sorts of things like composition and light and um, scale and the actual material of paint you don't have to worry simply about capturing a likeness or pleasing a client or you're not you you have the freedom to fail so I feel with this painting I I really took a lot of risks and and, and you and you feel that that's that's like the baseline you've got to get that on board before you seriously go out into the world and start taking on commissions. You need to know how to paint. Well, I think I think it, it's not necessarily before you take on commissions, but I think you have to keep growing as a painter. Right. And and if you're always just working, uh, you know, you're trying to please your client and you're, you're sort of working to sort of their specifications, it limits the amount that you can kind of experiment and take risks and take a leap in the dark and try new techniques. And so by painting friends and, and particularly Kirsty, where we have this shared love of history and drawing and, and kind of painting, that I can I can experiment in a way that I can't experiment if I'm working back to back on commissions. And so this painting is very much experimental and, and came out of a, 
a drawing that I, I did with Kirsty last winter. After many, many drawings that I've done that were okay, they were they were not that interesting. They were they maybe looked like her, but they weren't very sort of compelling. But then I made this one drawing, I turned the whole composition on its side, and suddenly by making the composition landscape, it changed oh. the focus of the painting for me. And I suddenly found this much more interesting composition. And I felt like it, it changed the way in which I approached the whole painting. Um, and, and also, I bought new brushes, these very fine sable brushes. And my mark changed and became much lighter and much more delicate. Well, the thing was, I was trying to remember back to your previous paintings in 13 and 14, and I seem to remember that the mark making was much more bold. Rough, much thicker. Yeah, thicker and rougher and more I was rough. really, really surprised when I saw this one. Yeah, my, my, very mark, different. my mark was very blocky, but actually now it's still blocky, but the blocks are smaller. <laughs> so it's just it's like, it's just the scale has become more right. so, uh, I don't know, sort of miniature somehow. No. Um, and it, it's, again, it's, it's just exploring. I guess I've been looking a lot at Dura, and, and I love early Freud paintings because they remind me of Dura. And so I've been looking a lot, I've been drawing a lot of plants in detail, um, working in the herbarium in Cambridge, drawing a lot of oh, wildflowers. And I, I guess it's made me zoom in a lot and, and think about things in more detail. Tell me what it was like meeting Jenny Savile last night. It was very exciting. I, I, since I was 18 years old, I've admired her work and looked up to her. And, and sort of because she is such an incredible force in figurative painting, it gives you hope and faith in figurative painting as a thing that's alive and evolving and that I want to be part of. Um, so yeah, it was very exciting to meet her. And I, I just feel incredibly inspired by her and her work. I have this lovely photograph of two of you together. It's now the banner on my Making a Mark Facebook page. I have never ever put any person in the banner before, but I just couldn't resist it with the photograph. It is superb, well, and I will make sure to send it thank to you. you. I'd love to have a record of yeah. meeting her. Yeah, no, it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much, Clara. I am very, very sure that a lot of people watching this video will have learned an awful lot about what it's like to be a portrait painter and how to develop. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you Thank very you. much.